Hi, and welcome to the History Lessons in Edupedia World. When talking about Roman art, there is something we just cannot forget to mention. Because it's so ingrained in our imagery of Rome and Greece, especially too, that if we went by without even touching it, it would be a disaster. We're talking about mosaics or the art of tile work. We have to say yes, the first to do so were Greeks. But with many things in, Roman, uh, in the Roman world, they took from Greece and improved it. The oldest were made of small cobblestones of different colors and they only depicted, normally, geometrical shapes. Then styles and fashions started evolving with the years, up to creating specialist jobs and workshops that were constantly on the lookout for new ways to improve these la really laborious decorations. As said, even if this started with Greece, the expansion of the Roman Empire took this technique really everywhere they went. And although the level and the skill of the artists was diluted, as obviously you don't have the same momentum and all the knowledge together in one place, you had to relearn and people didn't have the access to all the knowledge or the material. You, you can see that if you compare mosaics from Roman Britain or Italian ones. You will notice that, for example, the British ones are simpler in design and less accomplished. But hey, they did what they could with what they had. And typically, Roman subjects were normally scenes celebrating gods, domestic themes, and especially, especially geometrical designs that may start simple but get really complex. What do we have in Pompeii and Herculaneum? Well, here the technique was normally used to cover niches, walls, and pediments sometimes, and, these, and then murals that often imitated original paintings. Then we have also examples in the vaults of the imperial, imperial Roman baths. Here, the baths were decorated using mosaic and glass. So, imagine the effect with the water and the sun reflecting and shimmering. It must have been amazing. The floors of the pools themselves, normally in baths, were tiled and even mausoleums had sometimes uh, mosaics and tile work, not only for decoration, but as you can see, sometimes even to create portraits of the deceased. This is how good the technique got. The technique got so good that you could actually create the imagery of people. So what exactly were tiles? Let's just go quickly through it. Well, they were made of small, at the start, black and white, and then colored squares. They were typically between half a centimeter, a centimeter or a centimeter and a half. But for fine details in more elaborate uh, tile work, you could go as small as one millimeter in size. That's amazing. The materials are used, well, marble, 
was one of the uh, best choices for Romans, tiles, glass, um, stones, pottery, and sometimes even shells have been used as tiles. You, you did with what you had around and you improved it. What you did is you prepared fresh mortar and then you positioned the tiles next to each other uh, without any gaps. Then you filled the little gaps that always are created with more liquid mortar. You cleaned the surface and then you polished it and you had it. It sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, it got increasingly difficult and I'm sure that's what we're going to see. So, let's just go briefly through the evolution of the tile work because it didn't get that good just in a couple of days. And Pompeii and Herculaneum actually give us a lot of material on the evolution of this type of artwork. Well, the most simplest one uh, is the what is called Opus Signinium. This is from the second century Republican period of what we've been talking about. Very simple and normally only for some decorated pavements, sometimes the floors of the houses of wealthy people, the domus. You didn't use it extensively outside, that's for sure. And you used, well, normally just simple colours like white or then the colours that the stones that you got had. So you see these reddish bits uh, combined with the white tiles and black tiles to create this geometrical decorations. Here things get more complicated and interesting. Uh, at this period you already already needed specialists, okay, before you could, if you were a builder you could kind of do it if you were skilled. Now we're talking about specialists that took care of the tiles. This is because of the delicate part of the job of placing them at the correct timing. Because remember, you had to put the mortar on, so you had a fresh pavement, and then you had to calculate the time you needed to put correctly each piece before the mortar dried and it was still a bit moist um, or that it wasn't too runny either. This was really, really difficult. I myself would have no clue how to start. And in this kind of artwork, some scenes uh, actually, for the complexity, needed to be previously done inside workshops to aid for its positioning later. Uh, in this case, we can say that there's a curiosity that I find funny, that some uh, we know that there were some vendors that uh, were selling mosaics by catalogue, just like what you had some years ago, that someone just knocked on your door, uh, had a catalogue of certain things and they sold them door to door. Yes, that is quite modern. And then at the second century this slightly evolves into uh, also using identical tiles of one centimeter of only two colors, black and white, and using them for uh, geometrical motives. This was a fashion that went into vogue at that moment. That's what they liked. Then, we start varying in sizes of the tiles with the Opus Berni Berniculatum. 
Vermiculatum comes from Vermis, uh, if I'm not mistaken. The meant uh, or the means uh, worm in Latin. This comes from the really elaborate and difficult uh, <coughs> technique that you needed to apply with all this small, screamy, and easy to fall and uh, miss tiles. Because for the outer framing, as you can see here quite well in this uh, portrait, for the outer framing and the backgrounds, they used the normal sized tiles, but for the smaller and more detailed artwork, it contained a great variety of colors and smaller, smaller tiles. This gave uh, the option of shadows and to give it also some volume. And here we see the, a great change, I'm sure you've seen from the other ones, where detail and complexity just blooms. Look at the artwork underneath with all this fish and sea animals. This is done with just small, small tiles that give the option to create the different shades of color. Then we have uh, quite a curiosity that we've seen a lot in Pompeii. This one is less well known the Opus Sectile. Here you use pieces, whole pieces of marble to create the artwork. Instead of just using small tiles, you use whole pieces of marble that, you will st that they stuck on the walls and on the floor. This is really delicate to create the pieces as also, obviously, laborious to create it in the same way as the mosaics because you really didn't have that much of a colour scale to work with. But the material was very good, uh, was only, obviously, accessible for wealthy people and it gave you this really shiny, well, beautifully looking artwork. Also we see here with the two animals but they still still loved the geometrical art and decorations so they use opposite for both. And finally another example that we've basically seen in Pompeii is the opus tectorium. Here we have a type of stucco that uh, you use to cover the walls with, depends, three or four layers and the last one being uh, a kind of really uh, thin marble, well polished and that was used as a surface in where to paint on top. So you had pieces of marble and then you painted the marble uh, that was at the outer layer of the wall. So well, we've seen the decorations and how beautiful artwork they had on the floors and on the walls. But you did not only use it for decoration. It was obviously, but we have this famous example of Pompeii with a really well-designed black dog and underneath it says Cave Canem. This is Latin for beware of the dog. This was a motive that was very famous and extensively used in many domos, uh, especially at the entrance. It's just the same, same, same as many houses that you can find nowadays that have a sign on the gate saying beware of the dog just to let you know to 
keep your eyes open and not get scared when the guard dog shows up or starts barking. Something else they used this uh, the tile work for, and we've seen previously in the uh, market area and the commerce in the towns, is these uh, mosaics you had in front of the guilds. This was in front of the contract houses and it showed the, uh, the trade of whatever guild it was in front of. If you remember this one, yes, for wine or for oil, for uh, trading, for fruits, for fish, you had any kind you needed. So, they used mosaics not only as decoration, but also as simple signs. And to just wrap up, I want to finish off talking about this amazing artwork that we find in Pompeii. For example, we have here the one we saw before. You can see the detail of all this different sea animals. Not only we can see what uh, species there are, it's really, really detailed, but this also gives us information on what kind of animals they ate, what kind of animals they knew about. Artwork not is, is not only to say, oh, that is pretty, and it is, obviously, but it gives us so much information. A good example is also the Alexander mosaic that dated around 100 BC, and it's in the house of the Faun, remember, in Pompeii. What we see here is uh, a battle between the armies of Alexander the Great and Darius III of Persia. This is really, really big. It's 272 by 513 meters. That's around 8 feet, uh, 11 and 17 feet, 9. We find this one is actually taken and it's now in Naples, but the, f the mosaic is made of about one and a half million tiny colored tiles arranged in curves. The style, I'm sure you can guess, yes, it's Opus Vermiculatum, uh, the uh, worm work, remember? The color scale is also really, really rich. I'm sure you've seen it before. Let's see it in more detail. Look at how amazing this color scale is. The process must have been really difficult and tedious to find all these colors. The work was done for the private residence, obviously, and it was most likely commissioned by a very wealthy person or the entire family. The fact that this scene was made to be viewed in the house reveals also the really um, <coughs> heroic imagery that Romans still had for Alexander the Great, uh, being inspired by him and the power that he represented and emulated. Look at Romans creating the empire and the empire that Alexander the Great created in the past. And as said, this was arranged on the floor where the um, patriarch the head of the house would receive, would receive his guests. This was the first decoration a visitor would see. And if you were a visitor in that house, you would be impressed, right? 
the purpose obviously was to also see the status immediately you could just quickly wham you could see the status of this family and also distinguish the personality of the owner this gave you the idea of how the owner worshipped this the character the the image of Alexander the Great and he had him in his house probably also uh, reflecting uh, what he wanted to reflect of himself as a great warrior maybe so as we've seen tiles and artwork you could see as decoration we see a signage and we also see as always as being a way to show off and to distinguish your status from the status of your visitors or anyone that was coming close to your house and this obviously would only be found in domus or in villas only really wealthy people could pay someone to not only create this but to start building in their house imagine how long that took tile little tile at a time putting it on the mortar at the correct time so this is the end of this little lesson on tile work on mosaics i hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next lesson